Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now I don't normally do these kind of internet commentary videos because I don't really believe they add much if you haven't got the bike in front of you but with this latest S-Works Shiv released I had to say something about it in terms of aerodynamics because it is quite radical and I like how Specialized have basically gone against the UCI completely with regard to TT bike regulations and just gone look we know triathlon bikes we can make them really fast now uh, we don't care about making a, a TT bike for UCI. Let's you know. Let's see what we can do with with triathlon bikes now. I'm not into triathlon really, but I do like looking at the bikes and seeing how they differ from UCI TT bikes. And this one in particular has caught my attention because what Specialized have done. Okay, they keep going on about integrating lots of storage for the triathlete in terms of water and gels and stuff, particularly with that big water hydration box at the back. But what they've actually done for me is create a land yacht with two wheels they've pretty much added apart from the front triangle and the down tube and everything they've pretty much added three quite large airfoils to this bike particularly the one at the back it's pretty big now like I said why can't this work like a land yacht um, give itself forward thrust from a crosswind like a sailing boat or a land yacht well it could now it's going to be quite difficult to determine that whether we do it in a CFD or wind tunnel and I'm sure they've done it in the wind tunnel but as you know with a on a TT bike if you use a rear disc wheel there are certain yaw angles or apparent wind angles where you can actually get negative drag or let's say lift in the terms of you know sailing or or airplane wing now before we go too much into it and with yaw angles and apparent wind Let's just remind ourselves how a yacht or a land yacht is going to work and could it be that this bike creates its own forward thrust in crosswinds. So I really like this picture because it's quite good at explaining true wind, uh, induced wind and apparent wind and I found this image to be quite handy so I use this one. Basically true wind is the wind you're going to experience if you were stood still on a day where it's windy. It's the wind velocity and the angle of if your frame of reference wasn't moving in the wind and you can tell that by this picture quite sums up quite nicely by the angle of these uh, these boats here at anchor because their anchor chains will be coming down off, off the bow and they will be slipstreamed you know bow into wind pretty much at zero degrees they'll they'll wave about a bit but pretty much we can say the true wind is coming directly on the bow of these moored boats so that's coming from the right now the induced wind is the self-made wind that the boat is feeling basically as it moves through the air under power and the apparent wind is kind of the average or the resultant between the true wind and the induced wind and if you were to stand on the bow of the boat that's what you would feel in the face you'd feel the angle of that and the velocity of that that's the one you're going to feel now the object with a sailing vessel is to produce forward, forward movement obviously but is to use that apparent wind over the sails to produce a lift. Now we can see that with this little black and white arrow I've drawn here saying lift. Now obviously if that force was there on its own first of all the, the sailing vessel would just slip sideways through the water in the direction of that lift but more likely than not it would also just topple over because along with the force there's a, a toppling moment which I haven't, I haven't drawn to keep it simple we're just taking into account forces. So what a boat needs is a keel or dagger boards or a centerboard and what they do is basically balance that side force so the boat doesn't topple over and you can see on this America's Cup boat from last year it's got two dagger boards they're actually submerged foils but they're working like dagger boards here to oppose the side force of the lift and balance the forces in the sideways direction basically now the point is with a sailing boat is to get some of this lift vector in the forward direction so it has a small forward component basically and if we add these vectors or these arrows head to toe like you do in beginner maths so this is the one off, off the sail or basically a wing on this boat it's a fixed sail it's rigid and the two opposing lifts or side forces of the two dagger boards we can see there's a small resultant thrust which actually drives the boat forward. Now as the boat, this boat's just done a turn, as it accelerates forward the induced wind speed picks up. It basically creates its own wind 
and if the induced wind speed picks up and the true wind is always the same, let's say 20 knots, the apparent wind angle actually swings round closer to the bow of the boat. And the faster the boat goes, the lower the yaw angle or the lower the apparent wind angle. And it's exactly the same in cycling. So a really strong cyclist will experience lower yaw angles than a very slow cyclist. Let's imagine you're sat on your bike stationary and there's a 30 kilometers an hour crosswind directly off your right hip at 90 degrees your apparent wind angle is that crosswind as soon as you start moving forward that apparent wind angle it swings around to your head and if you go really really fast you can bring the your angle almost down to a headwind basically and then any lift off any foils becomes zero because they're not passing the foil at an angle so are specialized basically producing lift from this bike like like this sailboat well let's have a look now for sure we know that using things like disc wheels on TT bikes can dramatically lower the induced drag from behind the object because it kind of separates the mixing of high and low pressure turbulence behind you and also we know that unlike this image I've drawn here there's a very unaerodynamic person sat on top of this creating a lot of turbulence and wake but if we delete the person and just think about what these foils are doing there's three very obvious airfoils on this bike the water storage box at the back and the two very long uh, airfoils at the front which is basically the fork and if we look at this sort of kind of plan view above view um, I've kind of drawn them to scale and let's, let's have a look see what's going on now they say this bike has been designed for crosswinds, crosswinds basically because in the real world that's what you experience something like Iron Man, uh, Kona the speeds aren't that high because it's such a long um, like the ground speed of the riders isn't that high because it's such a long event and there's some quite ferocious crosswinds so we do have these you know tangible yaw angles of apparent wind coming at you know between anything between 0 and 25 degrees really um, so can we harness these these huge airfalls that are on this bike that don't comply to UCI rules to actually provide some forward lift. And I can understand they, how they can reduce the drag because they kind of keeping in line the turbulence behind behind the shape of them, like a like a TT disc wheel. But if we get the angle right of the oar angle, now I'm saying it's probably a very narrow window of this working, but we could potentially get lift off these airfoils, not just. Uh, normal to the surface but actually in a slight forward direction now at most your angles yes there's much probably a larger vector in this direction which is going to be drag so I'd say in most scenarios there will still be a larger drag component pulling all the airfoils backwards but if we get your, your, your angle right and I, sus I suspect Specialized have tested this maybe we can get a bit of forward lift coming off these airfoils and once we draw the vectors head to toe like we did before we can actually end up with a small final thrust vector and actually push the bike forward now like I said with the sailboat we have to have keels in the water to stop the thing falling over or slipping sideways on a bike we don't have keels so if we take into account the forces just for a minute the forces have to be opposed by the tire so these side forces of lift don't forget this is the top down view will be balanced by extra side load at the tyre contact patch in the ground. That's going to create a slightly higher rolling resistance because also there's a drag, drag component going back from this patch as well. And now we've got side load coming in to balance the side slip basically of the bike. Now, one other thing that the keel does, like I said, is correct the toppling moment. So from this lift vector here, yes, it's a force and it creates a side slip which is opposed by the keels but because it's a force at acting at a distance above the center of gravity of the boat it will also create a toppling moment and normally the keel is ballasted in such a way that that toppling moment is also balanced in the other direction and the boat doesn't topple over but on the bike we don't have a keel to correct the toppling moment so we have to use our body weight and normally that's what you feel when you're riding through cross wings and the front wheel starts to twitch because of the imbalance of the, the drag on the front wheel you have to actually shift your body weight to stop the thing toppling over. 
Um, if you've ridden in a really ferocious crosswind, you know almost have to sit off one side of the saddle to stop the bike toppling over. So instead of using the keel as the riding moment on a bike, you're using your body. Now, these Air Force have quite a large surface area, so especially the front one. And the, the alarming thing with the front one is the front foils are connected to the steering axis. So any imbalance of the side force on this is going through the steering axis and can move through that bearing, basically, and that's quite alarming. On the rear, it's not so bad because it's fixed. It can't, there's nothing for it to pivot around. But on the front, if you have some very high yaw angles, you will have to correct that with your hands and your shoulders. Now, what would be really trick, and specialized, you can thank me, thank me for this if you want, get in touch and we'll, we'll discuss it, is if you could morph the angle of the foils depending on the apparent wind and the yaw angle. If you could do that, then we could actually harness more of a forward direction component of this lift and create a bigger final thrust vector. Just like we do on the sailing yacht and on the land yacht, we can adjust the masthead on the land yacht or we can adjust the bi-mast head on here and pitch this wing into the apparent wind to angle this lift vector anywhere we want. And if we could do that on the bike, well, that would be great because then, it, in theory, we'd be able to go even faster in a crosswind and then the max speed of the bike in the crosswind would be limited basically by the drag that creates. And then the faster we go, it's like a perpetual cycle, the faster we go, the more the apparent wind angle will come in and then we can change the, the, the foil angle again to suit. Now, engineering that on a bike with morphable foils is quite an interesting proposition. Uh, it's probably a bit overcomplicated for a bike and likelihood is the yaw angles aren't as big as sailing, so we don't really need to worry about it, but in theory it could work. Now, going back to the thing about the keel, this is a, basically a yacht without a keel now. We're, we're having to use our bodies to correct the toppling moment and what happens if we don't do that well, the, the likelihood is that the yacht will slip sideways for a bit and then as soon as it gets any imbalance it will just topple over. Um, and this is exactly what happened to Garrett Thomas in Game Over Game. He couldn't use his body as a keel properly and to some extent also the tyres couldn't balance the side load and he was blown off the road. So that's a little discussion on the aerodynamics of the shiv. Do you think it can provide any forward thrust at all or is it just about reducing drag like a disc wheel? It's an interesting thing. I'd like to put it in the wind tunnel and do some CFD on it, but in theory it could work. No one's really discussed the aerodynamics on this yet um, that I know of. If you like that, let me know. Like and subscribe, and we'll do some more videos like this. Cheers.